Morph and Macduff. Could years of naming various suspects, criminal profiling, and the reasonably new science of geographical profiling have found the most likely suspect to be brought forward in the infamous Zodiac Killer case? Has Mike Morford settled on a suspect after spending years investigating the case and finding new suspects? It seems so, but who is Mike Morford, what is geographical profiling, and how does it support Morford's suspect? If you want to catch up on the case and the various suspects put forward throughout the years, watch Bad Things' extensive collection on the Zodiac case. It takes a special type of person to dedicate their life to pursuing justice and an extra special investigator that goes beyond what law enforcement is willing to do. Mike Morford, or Morph as he's known on internet forums, is one such person. Mike Morford is a well-known American television consultant, true crime blogger, author, and podcaster. He is also the proprietor of Abjack Entertainment. He co-hosts the Criminology Podcast with his colleague Mike Ferguson, in which they discuss new and significant information regarding some of the most infamous cases in the history of crime. He also co-hosts the Zodiac Speaking Podcast with Richard Grinnell. The two investigate one of the greatest mysteries in America, the notorious Zodiac Killer case. Mike and Richard have devoted countless hours to analyzing every facet of the Zodiac case, and in each episode, they investigate a different aspect of the mystery. The podcast has transmitted over 50 episodes since March 2021, has received 4.5 stars, and has been downloaded over 1 million times. In addition to podcasting, Morford has published The Case of the Golden State Killer and The Case of the Zodiac Killer, both of which have become bestsellers. Abjack Entertainment's headquarters in New Jersey was formally established in September 2019. Morford is also a television consultant who has appeared on The Golden State Killer, The Hunt for the Zodiac Killer, The Oxygen Program, and The DNA of Murder with Paul Holes. Morford has put forward many suspects over the years, but is convinced that his latest one is the Zodiac. How did Morford become interested in his latest suspect, William McDuff Andrew, aka Mac? Morford states on his latest podcast, episode 37 parts 1 and 2, My Suspect Mac, that he firmly believes that Zodiac lived in Riverside, California, and was connected to the Cherry Joe Bates murder case. Cherry Josephine Bates, also known as Cherry Joe to her family and friends, attended California's Riverside Community College as a freshman in 1966. She worked part-time at the Riverside National Bank and shared a home with her father. Bates decided to study at the Riverside City College Library around 5 p.m. on October 30, 1966. She left a note for her father that read, Dad, went to RCC Library. As he was aware that the library closed at 9 p.m., her father, Joseph, became concerned when she did not return home late that evening. On October 31st, he reported her missing at 5.30 a.m. A college groundskeeper discovered Bates's body near the school's library annex on Halloween morning. She had been stabbed, and it was clear that she fought fiercely to repel her attacker. Bates was fully clothed, and none of her belongings were taken. Her Volkswagen was positioned approximately 100 yards from where her body was discovered. The ignition key was still in the ignition, and further investigation revealed that the car's ignition system had been tampered with. Her father and authorities began receiving anonymous letters shortly after her death. One month after Bates's death, the first one was sent to the authorities. It was a typed confession that began, She was young and beautiful, but now she is battered and dead. She is not the first victim, and she will not be the last. The sender also provided additional information about the crime. Additionally, Bates's father received three brief handwritten letters. Due to these confessions, there were speculations that the Zodiac Killer was responsible for Bates's murder. In a 1970 letter to the Los Angeles Times, the Zodiac Killer stated, I do have to give them credit for stumbling across my riverside activity but they are only finding the easy ones. There are a hell of a lot more down there. 
Morford believes that the wording and grammar of these letters are a dead ringer for the Zodiac letters. That is, until a detective friend of his told him to concentrate on the Vallejo area when known and not suspected Zodiac murders took place. Many are still convinced that Sherry Jo Bates was a Zodiac victim. Morford started looking at who could be a suspect in the Vallejo area. What piqued his interest was a phone call. A man called the Vallejo Police Department at 12.40 a.m. on July 5th to report and claim responsibility for the assault on the night of the Ferrin Magoo attack at Blue Rock Springs Park. The caller also claimed responsibility for the murders of Jensen and Faraday just six months prior. Three-tenths of a mile from Ferrin's residence and a few blocks from the Vallejo Police Department, police tracked the call to a phone booth at a Springs and Tuolumne Roads filling station. Morford says it doesn't make sense that if the killer wasn't from Vallejo, he would wait up to 40 minutes to make a phone call from a booth just a couple of miles from the scene. Morford speculates that the Zodiac lived in the area, hid his car, and then walked to the phone booth to make the call. Morford then started the tedious task of going through a phone book printed in 1969 to see what names would come up within walking distance of the phone booth. After extensive investigations using distance to the phone booth and the description of the Zodiac, Morford whittled it down to some individuals. He found that most locations were business premises, except for one. McDuff Andrew lived on his family's business premises. Morford started looking closely into McDuff, and when he found a picture of him from 1963, he knew he was onto something. Next, Morford got a hold of McDuff's handwriting and was astounded at how similar it was to the Zodiacs. Morford would later find a treasure trove of what some call coincidences and others call hard to ignore. Morford and some profilers believe in a stop-start activity pattern in most serial offenders. Stop-starting is when a killer is inactive for a period due to something happening in their lives, such as the birth of children, prison time, job changes, or other personal experiences. As Morford would find out, McDuff's history was no different. McDuff grew up in Vallejo, living in apartments connected to his father's real estate business, 500 feet from the intersection of Springs and Tuolumne, and the phone booth from which the call after the Ferrin Magoo attack originated. On December 20, 1968, Faraday and Jensen were slain on Lake Herman Road, approximately seven miles east of McDuff's parents' residence on the fringes of Vallejo. Six months later, on July 4, 1969, just before midnight, Ferrin and Magoo are attacked by Zodiac at Blue Rock Springs, approximately four miles north-northeast of McDuff's parents' home. Magoo described the Zodiac as 5 feet 8 inches in height, 195 to 200 pounds in weight, rotund with a large round face, 26 to 30 years old, and without spectacles. This was an almost perfect description of McDuff. Zodiac then contacts law enforcement from a phone booth approximately 500 feet from McDuff's parents' home, approximately 30 to 40 minutes after the assault at Blue Rock Springs. The Zodiac attacked Brian Hartnell and Cecilia Shepard on September 27, 1969, at Lake Berryessa in Napa County. During a conversation, the Zodiac mentions being a fugitive prisoner from a prison that is presumed to be located in Deer Lodge. Just days before this, McDuff's cousin is gravely ill in Deer Lodge. If McDuff is the Zodiac, he might have mentioned Deer Lodge because it was on his mind. Paul Stein, a taxi driver in San Francisco, was murdered by Zodiac on October 11, 1969. Two days later, the Zodiac dispatches a letter containing a piece of Stein's shirt to a newspaper. Officer Richard Raditich was murdered in San Francisco near 666 Waller Street on June 19, 1970. A week later, Zodiac hints that he murdered Raditich in a letter. McDuff has been linked to 551 Debosi Avenue in San Francisco, 0.2 miles from the Raditich murder. In March of 1971, Zodiac sent another letter. Morford says this is a perfect example of the stop-start activity. 
McDuff's life changes when he accepts a position with the state of California. Morford is uncertain of his position, but by the end of his 30-year tenure, he was a prison sergeant and permitted to instruct prison warders firearms use. Morford says the next stop-start is another significant event in McDuff's life. In January of 1974, Zodiac wrote his first letter in three years, and McDuff got engaged in June of the same year. After a month, the Zodiac dispatched his final confirmed letter. In October of that year, McDuff marries and moves to Vacaville, 300 feet from a couple who received a letter containing baseball tickets from someone purporting to be Zodiac in 1969 when they lived in Vallejo. In December 1990, a potential Zodiac card was mailed from Eureka, California, a city more than 200 miles away from Vallejo. In the 1980s, McDuff purchased a property in the Eureka region. McDuff passed away in Oregon in 2014 and was cremated, rendering any direct DNA analysis impossible. In 2015, a blog post written by McDuff's widow generated renewed interest. She discovered a box of McDuff's old belongings that she named the guilt box with the word guilt written on the box's exterior. The box contained a copy of The Code Breakers by David Kahn, the same book that experts believe Zodiac used as a guide to constructing his ciphers. His widow mentions that he read the book in 1980 and misplaced the original copy. Because he enjoyed the book so much, he requested another copy which was found in the box. In the second part of Morford's podcast, My Suspect Mac Part 2 of 2, Meet the Profilers, Doug McGregor, a geographical profiler, joins Morford to explain his findings. Geographic profiling is a technique of criminal investigation that analyzes the locations of a succession of connected crimes to determine the most likely area where the offender lives. Geographical profiling combines qualitative and quantitative methods and aids in comprehending a criminal's spatial behavior and narrowing the investigation's scope to a smaller portion of the community. Typically utilized in cases of serial murder or rape, but also arson, bombing, robbery, and terrorism, the technique assists police detectives in prioritizing information in investigations involving hundreds or thousands of suspects and leads. Understanding the spatial pattern of a crime series and the characteristics of the crime scenes can provide investigators with additional helpful information, such as whether the crime was opportunistic and the offender's degree of familiarity with the crime location. This is founded on the correlation between a criminal's behavior and their existence outside of crime. Doug McGregor believes, through his profile, that the Zodiac lived in Vallejo. He concluded this by finding a center point for all the attacks, Vallejo. According to McGregor, the Zodiac starting point of his hunts was the center of the town. McGregor also believes that the payphone and a suspect walking to make a call have a vital role in his profile. When given an address and asked by Morford where this location relates to his bullseye area, McGregor replies, right in the middle. This was McDuff's address in Vallejo. In his own words, Mike Morford has said that McDuff is 100% the Zodiac and that he is hanging his gloves up in the investigation. He has also said that he has handed over bombshell evidence to authorities and is waiting for feedback. What is this evidence and can geographical profiling help solve this decades-old case? Please leave us your comments below.